at the top, I want to express my deepest condolences to the families and loved ones of last week's terrorist attack in Moscow. We condemn terrorism in all its forms and stand in solidarity with the Russian people in grieving the loss of life from this horrific event. Colleagues, today this council spoke out in support of the ongoing diplomatic efforts led by the United States, Qatar, Egypt, to bring about an immediate and sustainable ceasefire, secure the immediate release of all hostages, and help alleviate the tremendous suffering of Palestinian civilians in Gaza who are in dire need of protection and life-saving humanitarian assistance. The United States fully supports these critical objectives. In fact, they were the foundation of the resolution we put forward last week, a resolution that Russia and China vetoed. But colleagues, the United States' support for these objectives is not simply rhetorical. We're working around the clock to make them real, on the ground, through diplomacy, because we know that it is through, only through diplomacy that we can push this agenda forward. We're getting closer to a deal for an immediate ceasefire with the release of all hostages, but we're not there yet. Now, let's be clear. A ceasefire could have come about months ago if Hamas had been willing to release hostages, months ago. Instead, Hamas continues to stand in the way of peace, to throw up roadblocks, cower in tunnels beneath Gaza cities and behind uh, under civilian infrastructure and hide among the civilian population. So today my ask to members of this council and to member states in every region of the world is this, speak out and demand unequivocally that Hamas accepts the deal on the table. Now I hope I'm wrong, I really do, but I don't expect that from Russia and China, especially because they still can't bring themselves to condemn Hamas's terrorist attacks on October 7th. Just last week, Russia and China vetoed a resolution that condemned this horrific attack, a resolution the vast majority of this council supported. They have shown time and time again that they are not actually interested in advancing a durable peace through diplomatic efforts, nor for all their rhetoric are they interested in making any meaningful contributions to humanitarian efforts. Instead, they are using this devastating conflict as a political cudgel to try to divide this council at a time when we need to come together. It is deeply, deeply cynical, and we should all see through it. Colleagues, we appreciated the willingness of members of this council to take some of our edits and improve on this resolution. Still, certain key edits were ignored, including our request to add a condemnation of Hamas. And we did not agree with everything in the resolution. For that reason, we were unfortunately not able to vote yes. However, as I've said before, we fully support some of the critical objectives in this non-binding resolution. And we believe it was important for the council to speak out and make clear that our ceasefire must, any ceasefire, must come with the release of all hostages. Indeed, as I've said before, the only path to a durable end to this conflict is the release of all hostages. Critically, a ceasefire and the release of hostages will allow much more humanitarian aid to get into Gaza at a time when famine is looming large and provide an opportunity to work toward a sustainable cessation of hostilities toward a future where Hamas can no longer threaten Israel and never repeat October 7th and no longer control Gaza and use civilians as shields. Toward a future where Palestinians and Israelis live side by side in peace in two democratic states of their own. Something that will never happen with Hamas, a terrorist organization dedicated to the destruction of Israel and the killing of Jews a terrorist organization this body still fails to condemn controlling, Hamas, uh, controlling Gaza. Colleagues, we meet during the holy month of Ramadan. This should be a reason, 
a season of peace for Muslim communities around the world. Just as October 7th, Simhat Torah, should have been a day of peace for Jewish communities. This resolution rightly acknowledges that during the month of Ramadan, we must recommit to peace. Hamas can do that by accepting the deal on the table. A ceasefire can begin immediately with the release of the first hostage. And so we must put pressure on Hamas to do just that. This is the only path to securing a ceasefire and the release of hostages, as we have all called for today. That is what this resolution means. A ceasefire of any duration must come with the release of hostages. This is the only path. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Slovenia. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Today is an important day. Most of all, we hope it will signal an important day for the people of the Middle East, a day that will help silence the guns, stop the killing, free the hostages, as well as bring some calm to and clear over the sky, uh, the clear the sky over Gaza. The day that marks the beginning of the end of pain and suffering of civilians. This is a significant day for the elected members. We found our voice of a unifying force inside the Council. This is the reason why we are on the Council. We showed the leadership for peace. And it is a good day for the whole Council. As we align so just to explain what's happened here, the UN Security Council has approved a resolution on Gaza demanding an immediate ceasefire. And in fact, Antonio Guterres has tweeted saying it has just approved a long-awaited resolution demanding an immediate ceasefire and the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages. This resolution must be implemented. Failure would be unforgivable. That's Antonio Guterres confirming what we have seen there, a vote in which well the Romania United the States abstained and, and therefore didn't uh, vote yes, but didn't Mr. use President, its veto, and all the other cabinet need, members and other members voted members in favour, including, of course, uh, China. This, is this third month of course, has been um, long discussed. There was a vote on Friday. Now this vote has been finally agreed on. And it is clearly designed to put pressure on all sides to say the international community the is pressing for a ceasefire and hostage release. The US um, ambassador there saying a ceasefire can start with the release of the first hostages. And this is the only path. She repeatedly said any ceasefire fire has to be linked to the release of those Israeli hostages. John Sudworth is in New York for us. John, this is a, a big moment in terms of the international diplomatic pressure on all sides. I think that's right. This will be seen as a, a very significant moment. Uh, you know, the vote today, of course, follows numerous failed attempts to get similar language through the Security Council. You know, that key uh, phrase, an immediate ceasefire, often uh, having uh, proven to have been a stumbling block. Uh, the United States, on numerous occasions, using its veto. Uh, the last attempt, uh, just on Friday of last week, Russia and China using their veto. Uh, but today, uh, it was passed. Um, uh, you know, uh, all members voting in favour, except the United States, choosing to abstain. That meant that the vote uh, could go through. Um, and I think, you know, in the end, uh, this will be seen as, um, if nothing else, uh, in terms of the US domestic position, a sign of the growing frustration of the Biden administration about the way in which Israel is prosecuting uh, it's war in Gaza, the concern about uh, the humanitarian crisis there. And those three three key things, Gita, the uh, call for the immediate ceasefire, the call for the release of hostages, and the call for increased humanitarian aid, uh, you know, all coming together finally to get that vote. Uh, one of the uh, diplomats there from Algeria, one of the sponsors of the resolution, saying that this finally shows the Security Council is shouldering its responsibility.